Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Uh, what I wanted to do today was take a, a bit of a tour through a great new product that we've got called Robot Virtual Worlds. And it works with Robot C, one of the uh, VEX Robotics compilers. And so what I want to show is how you can get a free trial of Robot C, the new uh, 4.0 version, as well as Robot Virtual Worlds. So I'm just going to open up a new tab here, come over to Google, and uh, we'll take a look at Robot C. Let's just see what we get. So you'll notice that the URL is robotc.net. We'll click in here. And as you'll see, right on the front page here, there's a free trial download button. So we'll just click on that. And it takes us over here to this page. So what we're looking for is Robot C for the VEX Cortex and VEX IQ. So click on here and it brings us to the right page. I'm just going to come to this download link. And we'll just give that a sec for it to download to the computer. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so once you get the Robot C installed, you'll see this icon on your desk. You can uh, double click on that, and you'll see that you get an interface that sort of looks like this. There's a, a start page, you can pick a platform right off the bat, and there's another start page here uh, just to give you a, an idea. So you can get to Robot Virtual Worlds right from Robot C or if you want to go back to the browser you can come to downloads and go to robot virtual worlds from here as well so uh, while we're here let's uh, <coughs> take a look at the download so I'm um, over here robot C for vex robot virtual worlds it says this software is needed to use RVW with vex robots so I'm going to click on download and that comes down pretty quick as well so if you come in here, you can see that there's some more great links as well for curriculum. There's some good videos in here to watch. Uh, you can go to games, competitions. You can see different competitions that have been set up. There's the uh, toss-up, which is the VEX competition for this year. And there's tools. So this is something that I want to take a look at here in a little while as well as the level builder. It's a really cool aspect to virtual worlds. So that's almost downloaded. And again, you got a, a support page. So lots of FAQs and getting started with RVW and training. If you're looking for material to get started with the programming aspects, you can come in here as well. Okay, so let's click on our installer. Okay, so once you've got Robot Virtual Worlds installed, you can come to the help menu and click on manage licenses and you'll notice that you've got robot C for VEX Robotics already in trial mode here and we'll say add a license and we'll choose the product and we'll come down here to robot virtual worlds for VEX 4.x and then we'll just say start trial it said we'd like to create a desktop shortcut. Sure, why not? And now, when we hit close, we should be able to come here to Robot. And then when we select Compiler Target, we click on Virtual Worlds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just pause the video and grab some code that I've already got somewhere. And uh, we'll revisit this. Okay, so I've located uh, a data set that I have on my Autodesk 360 account. So if any of you are interested in grabbing that data set, it's open to the public. You can come in and type this into your web browser. Just put in uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash A360 dot CO forward slash 128TYAX. So you can just pause that, 
type that into your browser and you should be able to grab that data set it's just got some sample code in there so now that I've got that saved I'm gonna come back to robot C and I'm gonna hit open computer's been running a little bit sluggish here lately so bear with me oh no it doesn't even want to respond all those Mac users out there are laughing at me so I'm just going to come to my desktop where I've got this labyrinth code and hit open We'll come over here and so we'll see we've got some simple code here for a couple motors. So right now if I take this code and I come up here to robot and say compile and download program, it's saying no virtual world package selected. Please select the virtual world package from the window menu. Okay, let's go do that window, menu level, let's say curriculum companion tables. the right place. Compile and download program. So this should open up the robot virtual worlds dialog and here you can come in here and put your username in. I'm going to log in as a guest, log in locally. and now I'll come over here to robot so I'm gonna start here with just this regular vex claw box that's what I did this code for originally and if you look here you can see where uh, the, the ports are set up so as I scroll over the left motor you're seeing that highlighted yellow dot claw motor it highlights a yellow dot around the claw and so on and so forth so what I need to do is make sure that these motors here at the top of my code align with the robot itself. So the left m motor is saying motor port 1. So I have to make sure that in my motors and sensor setup that it coincides with this. So I'm just going to make sure left motor is motor 1 and then my right motor is motor 10. So why don't I close this out for the time being and come back to robot and sensors set up and I'll come to the motors tab and you'll notice that currently this code isn't set up to coincide with that robot so what I need to do is take left motor put it up here take right motor put it down here and then I'm gonna get rid of these guys on three and four and then I'll select no motor for those and I'm just gonna put the 393 motor in here and I'm going to reverse one of them. I'll do that on the right side. So we'll say OK. Now you'll see that the ports are the same thing as what's on my robot. So let's go back to robot. We'll say compile and download program. And the RVW comes back up. Now let's say login as guest. So I'm going to choose my clawbot. Now we'll go to movement and here we've got our challenges so these are just predefined challenges that have already been set up and you can come in here and we'll just select this labyrinth one because it's similar to what I have here so now all I need to do really is say start activity and it's gonna open up this world so navigation around this world is pretty straightforward you have the the wheel mouse on your uh, we'll zoom in and out. You can hit the play button to start the code. So this isn't going to do really what I want it to do. But I haven't modified this code yet. So this is just throwing in a bunch of random numbers. So we'll come back to this in a little bit. What I wanted to see was um, more or less how this all comes together. and 
taking a code and then choosing the robot, making sure that the um, motor and sensor configuration on the robot matches what's in my code, and then choosing my my level. So um, if I wanted to, again, I could come back and, and just play this out or choose another. So <laughs> as you can see, that I didn't really pay attention to the level that I was choosing. But uh, if we go back to movement and choose Labyrinth Challenge, we can start that again. So right now, let's actually take a look at how we can get around here. So all I'm going to do is get rid of all this code for the time being, except for my first statement. Okay, so I'm going to keep copying and pasting this and using this code to get around this labyrinth. So just to get an idea, I'm going to put in pseudocode. I've got to move forward is my first thing. So that's okay for what we have right now. And we're going to go at half speed. We're going to go for a second and a half. So let's just see how far we go with what we have right now. Let's say compile program. Okay, so it doesn't, doesn't go nearly long enough. So why don't we put this up to full speed as well? We'll change that to 127. And let's make this 5. No, it's not going to take that long. We'll go 2 seconds at full speed and we'll see what happens. So we'll see a little bit of a difference here. Okay, perfect. So now you're seeing how easy it is to troubleshoot your code when you've got a virtual setting as opposed to a robot on your desk you don't have to mess around with any switches it's just clicking the button so now what I'll do is the, n the next motion I want to do is make a point turn left so what I want to happen I'm just going to put that down one more what I want to happen next is I want my right side to turn at uh, we'll say half speed We'll say 63, and then my left motor, I'm going to leave that at zero, and I'm going to ask it to do that for one second. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so maybe what I need to do is extend that another half second up here and I probably want to go a full two seconds if I'm going to go at half speed let's try that one more time okay so I'm going to reset okay so two and a half seconds maybe went a little far could bring that back to maybe say 1.8 seconds right and so now I'm just gonna want to go forward again so I'm gonna grab this first statement and copy that over again and let's see how far maybe if that was 2.5 let's say let's say 3 3.5 seconds on this one Now I'm doing this the long way, just uh, not really for sake of the video, but just because this is how I had it set up. But um, if you were going to actually do this, what you would probably do is write down pseudocode. So if you were looking at this from a little bit further away, you could write down, okay, I need my robot to go forward for let's say three seconds, and then I need it to do a point turn left for one and a half seconds. So that would be the next line. So all you got to do over here is just put in the dashes or the yeah the forward slashes, and then type that in. Say move forward for three seconds, and by putting these forward slashes in, it essentially means that this is just a comment for 
whoever's writing the code. Um, it's the robot itself isn't going to read that. It's just to help translate for the time being. So what you might want to do first is write out pseudocode, and then it helps to translate into the actual uh, code language that you're putting in for the robot to read. Okay, so um, we'll just compile that one more time, and then we'll come back and, and see how it works. There's also some other views we can take a look at too. So this is kind of neat. We've got different camera angles. Let's take a look at it from the top. Oh, I got a motivation badge. Oh, but I bumped into the wall. So, um, so as you can see, maybe three and a half seconds for that last uh, that last statement wasn't wasn't. Uh, short enough. So anyway, that is a brief tour of Robot Virtual World and the new Robot C. And I really urge you to take a look because I think it would be a great addition to your curriculum. And it's just a, a really cool tool. So the next one that I'm hoping to do when I get a chance is show you how you can use your Autodesk software with Robot Virtual Worlds to create some really interesting levels. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. I know.